Great. So as I said, my name is Angelina. Uh, I do content for EA Global. That means that I was responsible for putting together all the sessions uh, at the conference, including this one. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to go over some of the lessons that we've learned as organizers about how kind of first time attendees can make the most out of the conference, and especially the kinds of mistakes we think people make to shortchange themselves on the kind of impact you can have uh, at EA Global. If you have questions about logistics, such as how do I use Swapcard, or where are the rooms, uh, where's the food, uh, you can find me at my office hours immediately after this talk. So we're gonna go straight into tip number one. Uh, so as part of my job, I read a lot of feedback uh, from attendees about what they wish they knew before they came to EA Global. I think the most important piece of advice I have for you is to come with specific and ambitious goals for the conference. So by specific, what I mean is I think a lot of people, they come to EAG and they have a goal that's like, you know, I want to make a couple of friends, I want to learn a bit more about EA, and I'm not against either of those things. I, you know, I do really hope you make friends. I do think that people who, yeah, get a lot out of the conference have kind of specific objectives they are trying to achieve. And then by ambitious, um, I think EA is a pretty ambitious community. We're trying to tackle really big problems in the world. And we think that lots of people kind of shortchange themselves on the impact that they can have by not aiming kind of high enough for their goals for the conference. But since it's your first EA Global, maybe you rightfully have sort of questions about like what can we do for you? So I want to go over some of the kinds of really ambitious, exciting outcomes that we see all the time in our feedback forums that happen at every EAG. So what do awesome outcomes look like? Here's a classic one. A lot of people come to EAG because maybe you're a student or maybe you're transitioning out of your current place in your career. Maybe you're here because you've wanted to pivot into direct work and you don't know what the EA job market looks like right now. So if this is kind of where you're at in your career uh, and you want to achieve this kind of outcome, what are some ideas for getting there? I think EAG is a really great place to run a lot of quick career tests on a lot of different options that you might have. So one thing you might do is spend a little bit of time brainstorming the types of roles, organizations, cause areas you're considering, and then giving Given sort of this list, maybe you go to the career fair and you talk to all the organizations that are there. Uh, lots of people go to the career fair uh, because they're really excited to showcase their jobs. If there are any that are particularly interesting, maybe the thing to do is to follow up with a one-on-one -on -one request to get more information about who would be a great uh, fit for that organization. Other things you can do, we have a job board on the swap card app, so if you open that up and you do a little bit of scrolling, that's a pretty good way to just get a lay of the land, understand what organizations are here and what they're hiring for. And then again, people come to EA Global because they're excited to talk to you, not some amorphous, fantastic, highly qualified EA, the specific people in the room. So if you are excited about an opportunity, the chances are that people who come here to advertise those jobs will be excited to talk to you. I think another piece of advice is if you're excited about particular roles, but you can't find specific organizations that are hiring for them, um, maybe what you do is you look up people two years out into their career who are working in those roles. And oftentimes, even if there's not a specific role being advertised, they might have great advice on how to position yourself to get into that industry, or they might know about opportunities that are not public at the career fair. I think a final thing here is it's really easy, I think, to come to EAG, a place where there's lots of enthusiasm, you're going to meet lots and lots of different people, and then you kind of go home and it's, you're really tired and you just sort of fail to follow up on the kinds of things you were thinking of doing. 
One piece of advice I give attendees is right now, before all the chaos of EAG, make a commitment, you know, put it on your calendar for the Wednesday after you get home, you're a bit more well rested from EAG, to just go through all the things that you were meaning to do at the conference. So here's another kind of outcome that we think people can achieve. Uh, some people come to EAG because they're really passionate about the general EA question of how to do the most good effectively, but they're kind of deeply confused about the answer. You know, uh, EA is a pretty confusing place. Uh, people don't always agree with each other, and maybe you have a lot of questions around what kinds of causes you want to orient your career or your donations or whatever resources you have to give around. Um, and so again, my advice here is spend some time thinking about what are the cruxes or key uncertainties you have about a particular area. So uh, if you're really excited about biosecurity, but you just are deeply unsure of what kinds of interventions are currently being tested out, uh, how tractable they are, um, how much impact you could personally make within them, then having a specific list of uncertainties to go through can help you filter down swap card and actually send out the right one-on-one -on -one requests. The other thing is, um, often if this is your first time at EAG, this might be your first time meeting a lot of uh, EAs in person. The people who write those blog posts or who post on EA forum or, you know, yeah, just have exciting ideas, a lot of them will be at this conference and you're allowed to just reach out to them. Um, yeah, my favorite experience coming to EAG is just seeing the people who write the blog posts that I really admire and getting to just talk to them about their work. Um, other things you can do here, so we're going to have a lot of content sessions at the conference. If you're interested in a cause area and just have absolutely no idea how to start, just attending a session or two and talking to professionals within that field might be a great way to sort of scope out other cause areas. So this is the third kind of idea of an awesome outcome you could achieve. Some people, they kind of get the cause prior thing, they know what they're striving towards, but they don't necessarily have the skills in order to pivot to an industry or a particular set of roles already. Um, I think EAG is a great place to come and go from, you know, maybe I should learn how to do technical alignment research or whatever the goal is. And to go from that to actually having a plan that feels like it's going to succeed uh, that you're actually going to stick to. Things I would recommend, there's going to be a lot of people in the same boat who haven't read the same readings or are on their path towards scaling up. Uh, this is a great place to find an accountability buddy, uh, someone who you can do whatever it is, the AGI fundamentals course with or uh, read the relevant blog posts on in order to keep you on track. Um, and again, uh, the people who are experts in the field, they come to EA Global because they're excited about helping you, the people in this room, uh, achieve those goals. And I think a lot of them would be really uh, willing to help audit kind of your action plan here. Here's a final idea. Uh, sometimes people come here because you know, maybe you've got the skills thing down, you kind of know the cause prio for now, you have a specific project and you're missing certain types of collaborations for it, whether that's funding, uh, talent, the right co-founders for your next startup. If you're in this spot, EA Global is a great place to just find the matching resources and the puzzle pieces for whatever it is that you are really passionate about. Um, so for instance, if you're looking for funding, we have several sessions that are going to be talking about funding, one explicitly on navigating the funding landscape in EA, uh, as well as some other sessions by major funders within EA. If you are excited about labor or talent, uh, reaching out to you know, people who are early out in their careers to fill those talent bottlenecks might be a great use of your time. Uh, for co-founders, we have an entire speed meeting where people who are interested in entrepreneurship can go talk to each other and maybe find their next co-founder. Cool. So I just did four examples. So I'm going to ask you to do one. Uh, I'm going to set a five-minute timer. And my prompt for you is, imagine it's Tuesday morning, and you've gotten back home. You're feeling a bit more rested. And EAG just went incredibly well for you. Um, so yeah, in that world, what happened? And I'm going to give you five minutes to just write that down.
Okay, it's looking like people are mostly done, so cool. My list was uh, all the speakers turn up for their sessions. Uh, that would be great. Uh, I think I want to do a little bit more learning about maybe biosecurity projects. I think that'd be pretty cool and understand the talent bottlenecks there. And then I wrote down, make one or two new friends. Maybe that's you guys. Um, cool, great, now that we've done that, uh, interactive portion of this workshop. So if you could all stand up, please. Uh, and I'm gonna ask you to find one person that you haven't already talked to today and share with them what your goals are and yeah, maybe you can help each other to achieve them. So go find a discussion partner. <laughs> all right. I'm so excited, people are excited to keep on talking. I promise I will give you more opportunity to keep on talking. All right, we're gonna find a seat again and we're gonna go over a couple more pieces of advice and then break out. Thank you, I appreciate it. I love seeing connections happen at EA Global, that is why we do it. Uh, yeah, thanks for uh, indulging me. Cool, okay. So hopefully we're all a bit clearer on the goals we have for the conference. Uh, and yeah, this brings me to the second point, which you guys are already doing. Uh, I think the biggest thing that people who don't really know what EAG is and come here are surprised by is how networking focused the conference is. Uh, we think of EA Global as networking first. Uh, the thing that we care about and the way that we measure our success is how many new valuable connections were made at the conference. This is pretty different from a lot of academic conferences. It's not gonna be the kind of thing where you know you just you take yourself from session to session and you just like listen in the audience and you like ask a question or two. Uh, I think you're gonna find that it's gonna be mostly a talking kind of conference and uh, yeah, with some interspersed with some sort of like more listening and information absorbing things. And here's a secret. People, people wanna meet with you. This is just, we like went into an avenue and we just like, clicked, uh, you can see like all these people are here because they're excited to talk to you. Um, yeah, I think it's kind of a bit intimidating sometimes if you're maybe like a little bit introverted and you're not quite sure what to do. I just wanna say EA Global is a place where it's not rude at all to approach people. Uh, it's like very normal to strike up conversations. Uh, it's, yeah, just like everyone will expect it. If you're having a hard time starting conversations in the lunch line or whatever it is, um, yeah, normal things you can say are like, hello, like, uh, what, are, what are you here doing? Or uh, <laughs> what's your goal for EAG? Um, I know maybe it's like a little silly, but yeah, I know lots of people have problems with just making that first step, but I think people really appreciate it when you strike up conversation. Uh, a specific way in which you can talk to people is booking one-on-ones. And I wanted to flag this here because from reading a lot of feedback, we consistently hear that the one-on-ones are the most valuable part of EAG for most people. Uh, taking it from the person I put together the content, um, I will say that I think the reason why this happens is, you know, there are only so many rooms and so many slots we can put for content, uh, but there are literally 1,400 different options you can have for one-on-ones. And uh, that means that the one-on-ones are gonna be the way that you can tailor make the conference to suit your needs, as opposed to just, yeah, the kinds of content that we think will be interesting to 100 or more people. Um, I would say that it's a rough ballpark. We advise the average attendee to have anywhere between maybe four to 20 one-on-ones. 20 sounds like a lot for people who, yeah, don't wanna talk to that many people. 20 would be too many for me, but I would say that it is pretty normal to have back-to-back one-on-ones um, throughout the entire day. And yeah, this is just like, if you haven't booked any one-on-ones yet, um, I think this is something to consider that lots of people find this the most valuable part of the conference. Uh, great, so how do you find people to talk to? Uh, one piece of advice I have is if you go on the swap guard, you see the sort of blue buttons on the front page and then you click on attendee data, you'll see that we've sort of ported over the entire swap card into an Excel, what that means is that you can use Control F in order to find people that you're particularly interested in. So if you wanna find 
all biosecurity PhDs who work at universities right now. This is the kind of stuff that you can use this data sheet to find. Um, cool. Great. So now you know how to find people and you know why it's important, hopefully. Um, the last thing I want to say here is networking with purpose. I think it's easy to come here and yeah, just hear the advice drilled into you that's like, okay, like I know I'm supposed to do the one-on-one -on -one thing, so I'm just gonna like go spam people with connection requests. Um, I'd say that, yeah, when you're figuring out who to network with, uh, we have some quick advice for how to send the one-on-one -on -one request and then how to make the most of your time there. Uh, so here's a very quick checklist that I would suggest for booking one-on-ones and then what to do when you're actually showing up. Uh, you'd be surprised by how many people book one-on-ones when they just like don't actually know the person. Um, even if you have sort of five minutes uh, and you're rushing between one-on-ones, the most important advice I'd say is, you know, uh, pull up the person's swap card, you know, make sure that you know who they are. Most people will have a LinkedIn on their swap card. Um, I think that's the most important thing because then you can figure out how that person can help you. Uh, the second heuristic is, yeah, I know a lot of people who book one-on-ones. Uh, if you're the person who sort of send the connection request, my advice is, uh, I think it's like customary to expect that if you book the meeting, hopefully you have a plan for what to do during the time. Uh, so once you've looked up a person, uh, sometimes what I'll do is when I have a one-on-one -on -one coming up, I'll sort of pull up my notes page and then type in like, okay, this person is the head of X charity and uh, the way they can help me is by helping me figure out if I should work at their org or at roles at, yeah, sort of competing orgs there. Um, the final thing I'll say is I think EA is a pretty ass culture environment. What that means is that we think that most of the time, especially at EA Global, it's just absolutely not rude to ask for things. And in fact, I think that's probably the most pro-social, polite thing you can do is to help people figure out how they can help you. So I know a lot of kind of, uh, maybe I'd say EAs who have more experience or who have been working at EA organizations for a while come to the conference in order to help people like you. So if they've accepted a connection request with you and they you know, want to do a one-on-one, -on -one, it means they want to help you. And so the easiest way to do that is to show up in a one-on-one -on -one and say like, hello, this is my name. Uh, yeah, this is what I'm looking for. And if this is what I'm looking for is, I'm excited to work at your organization. Please help me figure out whether or not I'd be a good fit. Uh, I think that's the kind of stuff that most people would be really excited to hear so they can help scope it out. I think another reason why it's yeah, really helpful to tell people up front what it is that you're looking for them is that yeah, it makes it much easier for people to redirect you if they're not the right person. So yeah, for instance, if I got a one-on-one -on -one request that said, you know, hello, uh, I'm, I have this event idea, I hear you guys do events, uh, I'd be really excited to get funding, support, uh, structure, stuff like that. Um, you know, it's much easier for me to then say like, thank you, you know, this is a great idea. Um, you should talk to Ollie Base on my team about this because this is not actually my core job. Um, so yeah, very easy things. I know these things are obvious, quote unquote, but you'll be surprised how easy it is to forget if you have 20 back-to-back one-on-ones to do, do each one with rigor. Um, cool, okay, more chances for talking. Uh, so here I'm gonna give you a little bit of time to brainstorm, given your goals, what are the kinds of connections that you'd be really excited to make? Those can be specific, like people, like XYZ people from this org, or it could be just like kind of a general profile of person. So I'll give you maybe like two minutes to do a little bit of brainstorming there, and then we'll do some shared networking goal setting. Okay, great, looks like people have ideas and are talking, which is awesome. We're gonna do the talking, but more structured. So if you could all stand up again, and I'm gonna ask you to find yet another person that you have not talked to today, and then share what kinds of connections are you trying to make? Cool, thank you very much, I appreciate it. All right, we're gonna really quickly go over some more tips, but glad you're making valuable connections. It makes me very happy. If you could find a seat, that would be awesome. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, you guys. Uh, yeah, just like nothing makes me happier than just walking at EA Global and just seeing the conversation. It's, it's a great feeling. Um, cool. So some last quick advice. Uh, I think, yeah, now that you kind of have a hang of doing the EA Global thing, this is it, you know, like this is EA Global, doing the talking to people thing, figuring out how to help each other. This is what the conference will be like. Um, I think the final way in which I think a lot of people fail to get the most value they can out of EA Global is just by failure to follow up. Um, and I think that can be in a variety of ways. Uh, one big thing is you're gonna meet a lot of people at this conference. Some people tell us they meet like 30, 50 people. Uh, you're probably not gonna remember kind of all the specific names or the specific things that you said in all the conversations. So one advice I would have is if you're having a really great conversation with someone, uh, the most important piece of information to remember is their name and their contact information so that you'll be able to find them later. Uh, when I'm having a really good one-on-one -on -one and I want to reach out to that person later, if I didn't book it through swap card so I don't have a way to contact them, uh, I just like sit there and get them to give me their email or Facebook or whatever it is, like right on the spot. Otherwise, they're just gonna fade into your memory and you're gonna be sad the week later when you're like, ah, could have made a great friend. Pity I didn't take any notes. Uh, the other piece of advice I have is if you're in the middle of a one-on-one -on -one and you say like, oh, I'm gonna get you this link or you really should meet X or whatever it is. Uh, if it's gonna take you one minute, just do it you know, on the spot. Uh, otherwise, your to-do list will be very, very long on the Monday. And you're gonna be like, ah, my past self could have just like reduced my workload by a lot, but didn't. Um, yeah, so I think that's the most important thing. I think the other thing that I think a lot of people wish is that right now, while you're still feeling really energized and you, yeah, are really enthusiastic about EAG, um, is a really great time to commit your future self to taking action. So that might look like finding a friend that you came to EAG with and making a commitment to get on a call on the Tuesday or whatever it is so that you can start you know, converting EAG into value for you. Or right after the conference, uh, once the connections are still fresh in your mind, maybe before you leave, you just like text everyone you're meaning to stay in touch with so that you, yeah, just like don't leave the conference without taking the connections and the value that you extract with you. Cool. Easy to do again, but just, yeah, really hard to execute sometimes. Um, yeah, the sixth thing I'll say is, yeah, again, as the person who put together the content, you know, I will say I do like the content. I think you'll get some good value out of going to content. The thing I'll say is I think it's important to go to these sessions with intentionality. Uh, I think it's really easy to just go into swap card and like click, 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 click. Then your entire day is just going from session to session. Instead, I think it's pretty useful to approach content the same way you would with one-on-ones, um, to ask yourself whether or not this actually will solve a problem for you. Um, is this going to convert into value for you? Sometimes the answer is yes. Oftentimes the answer is maybe uh, the content again is just like not gonna be tailor fit to your needs. It's hard to just interrupt a speaker and be like, hey, like I have a random question. Um, and so if you're finding yourself uh, just sort of taking yourself from content to content, uh, there are lots of other ways to engage with people that you might want to consider as well. Uh, the final thing I'll say is EA Global can be a stressful experience for a lot of people. Uh, it's not, no, most people don't walk around their day-to-day -day lives and meet just like 50 new people every day. Uh, that can be a bit overwhelming. Uh, I hear a lot of stories of people who go a little bit too hard on the Saturday and then come fr Sunday, they're just, uh, they're just like so tired and they can't, they miss all their morning one-on-ones and they're just feeling really sad in their hotel room. So don't let yourself be that person. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of different ways to help you take care of yourself at this conference. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have a lot of food, please, Please remember to eat. Uh, we're gonna have a nap room so that if you're just like smashing through one-on-ones and you need a place to go for a power nap, um, that'll be a great place to go. We'll have drop-in meditation sessions, a chill area that if you're just feeling overwhelmed, you can go there. 
Here are some of the rooms you might want to know about. So we'll have a quiet working room and a nap room in the horizons on the ground floor, uh, kind of on this side of the building. And then as you move towards the career fair and the atrium suite, you'll find the middle section is just cordoned off with like nice comfy furniture that you can sit yourself down in if you're yeah, having a really overwhelmed time or you just want to have a nice place to chill with people. Um, and finally, if you're having sort of particular problems with any attendees, uh, if you're feeling very stressed, overwhelmed, um, if you, yeah, just could use some additional support of that kind, uh, Charlotte Darnell uh, is a great person, works on the team with me, and she is available both on Swap Card and then in emergencies uh, on WhatsApp and, uh, yeah, over text through that number. This is all in the attendee guide, but this is all to say we, yeah, we think that one way in which people can sort of fail to get the most value they can out of EAG is just by going too hard. Um, you know, you don't have to be the, it's not a competition and you don't have to be the like one that books the most one-on-ones. Um, I, don't, I don't really think that's the effective strategy for, for most people. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have for you. Um, with our remaining five minutes, um, what I'd say is if you want to, you can stick around, um, maybe find one last person and just practice doing the introductions, uh, the self pitches that you're gonna do many times over this conference. Uh, and if not, I will find you in my office hours are gonna happen right outside. So thank you so much for coming here. Yeah, and welcome to EA Global. Appreciate it.